you for the technology that allows us to meet as we are doing. We thank you that you are sovereign over all these things. We thank you for your many, many demonstrations of your sovereignty in our lives. And now, Lord, as we come to your word tonight, we come recognizing that unless you open our eyes, there are things we will not see. Unless you open our understanding, there are things that we will not understand. And unless you give us grace, we will not be doers of the word. And so our prayer is that you would open our eyes and you will uh, give us understanding and that you will grant us the grace to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And so uh, be pleased now with our gathering. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We have begun to look at the five points of Calvinism, which are responses to the five points of Arminianism. And the five points of Calvinism, and the points were not written out by, by Calvin, you know, they, they reflect some of his teaching, which was really from the Bible. And that's what we're going to see as we, as we go. We're going to really be looking at the Bible. And uh, the, the five points are summed up in the acronym TULIP. T is for total depravity. U is for unconditional election. I is for irresistible grace. And um, L is for limited atonement. And P is for the perseverance of the saints. So total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the, uh, the saints. And I think I put the I before the uh, L. Last time we looked at the T, total depravity, and tonight we want to begin to look at the U, unconditional election. And so we'll begin to look at it tonight, and the Lord willing, we'll, we'll uh, finish it possibly on next week. So there, tonight will be part one, next time will be part two. Now, as we go through this study, it's very important that you you take some notes uh, even though you may have books on all of these things it's it's important that you take notes and and as we look at tonight unconditional election and limited atonement i don't know of anyone who accepted the these doctrines doctrine of, of uh, limited atonement especially i mean those who are uh, proponents of uh, limited atonement, those who preach it, teach it, uh, resisted some for years before they embraced it or before they understood it. And uh, the Lord willing, when we get to it, I'm going to give you 10 people on each side. I'll give you 10 people who who do not believe the atonement is, uh, is limited. And I'll give you 10 who believe that is, uh, is, 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 uh, is, uh, uh, well, unlimited and unlimited, uh, and, and and so so when we end the study, whatever side you end up on, <laughs> uh, which one, whichever one you believe in, you're going to be in good company either either way, and um, and nobody, by the way, uh, these doctrines, nobody, no book, no preacher, uh, convinced me of of of. Uh, these things, especially the uh, limited atonement. No one was able to convince me of these things or argue me into believing these things. The things that I believe, uh, and that goes with most everything, is uh, God opened my eyes and, and I saw things when God opened my eyes. And, and, and when, I, when God opened my eyes and I saw these things in the scriptures, uh, I mean, it was just so clear, I, and I wonder why didn't I? Why didn't I see this? Well, I didn't see it because God didn't hadn't opened my eyes. Uh, Monday, I had an exciting Sabbath day, one of the most exciting Sabbath days I've had in a long time, and it was because number one, I was determined that uh, I was going to give Monday to the Lord. It's really hard; you have to really work hard for Sabbath day because there's so many distractions, so many things that that you know that need to be done and and uh, the lawn for example i 
the only the only time I mow mow the lawn on the Sabbath day is like there's a rain situation. There's going to be rain the next few days, and and I need to get it out of the way. That, that that's the only time I do that. Um, I don't schedule appointments on Monday unless I have to. I had an appointment Monday uh, with uh, with my doctor, and and he's only available on on Monday. It was an annual. I got an excellent report, by the way. Um, but but I was determined to give God. The undivided attention uh, all day, and, um, and, and and other than of course the appointment, and and I did. I it, it, starting with my breakfast. I um, many times I you know, watch the news during breakfast, and uh, uh, I get news out of Israel every day from a uh, Christian perspective, and so I get news actually that the Israelis who are in Israel don't get because I'm getting it from a Christian perspective. And, and I, so I keep up with what's going on in Israel every day. And I've been doing that really since 1985. So I, I know what's going on over there every day. And, uh, but I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't watch TV news or anything. And many times I, I'll play music, uh, worship music. Uh, it, it, it edifies me and, and you know, it, 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 it uh, sometimes uh, is a means getting me into the presence of God. And, um, and, and of course, you have to be careful that um, you don't allow means to become ends. You know, you can listen to a music that's designed to get you into the presence of God or even a choir or a praise team. And you can get so caught up in the music that you worship the music rather than the God that the music is about. And, and you have to be very, very careful with that. But anyway, I didn't listen to any music, nothing. And, I, and so I was just... Uh, just quiet, practicing stillness, silence, solitude. And God started showing me things about Jonah that I had not noticed. I've been preaching, I've been preaching from Jonah <laughs> for over 50 years. I, I, I refer to Jonah in illustrations, Jonah and Elijah. I refer to them in illustrations more than anybody in the Bible. And God showed me so many things on Monday. Outlines, and, and many of you know, all I need is an outline. I can develop it on my feet. And I've got so many outlines that uh, if I should use them all, we'll be in chapter one of Jonah the rest of the year. So we're going to be in Jonah a long, long time. It's, it's, it's exciting, the things that God, that God showed me. And, um, and, you know, there's a relationship between belief and behavior. And many of you don't have a Sabbath day. Many of you don't take a day to spend with God because you don't believe that it will make a difference. There's a relationship between belief and behavior. And that's why you don't do it. That's why you don't do it. You don't believe that it will make a difference. I mean, time with God, Monday, the things that I've been able to accomplish as a result of that day with God, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. And um, uh, again, time spent with God is ume, double negative, ume, never, never wasted. But we don't do it. I mean, even in the day, I mean, we, many of us don't take five or 10 minutes to meet with God because we don't think it will make a difference. And you can very easily get into a routine in your, in your prayer life. I mean, it can be mechanical. Uh, I, you know, I got to spend my five minutes or my 10 minutes and, and get on with my business. And, and really, there's no real intimacy with God. There's no connection with God. There's no sensing of God's presence. And it's, it can happen. It can, it can happen to anybody. It, it, it's very easy. It, it can be very easy. But anyway, um, I, I'm going to encourage you to take notes uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one is, um, I, I, I don't like to... In fact, I don't like to give out outlines until they've been edited, until I've edited them. I try to go over my outlines seven times, and many times I go over them seven times, ten times, and I still miss an error. And that's why I have uh, other people to take a look at them, because, and of course, I dictate, and sometimes it's the, it's the dictator. Uh, I may say John, and the dictator thing may come out James, or something totally opposite. But anyway, I, I, I dictate things and um uh uh and and so and i'll try as we go forth in the book of jonah uh i i i want to make outlines available 
uh, as soon as I can after I get them proofread. And I urge you to get a notebook, uh, I mean, j uh, just for the book of Jonah, just for the book of Jonah. And uh, as you go to the book of Jonah, God will show you things also. I mean, uh, you know, one of the things that I saw that I'll talk about Sunday, Lord willing. No, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, I can. Because then you can look for it also and, and see what, you, see what, just see what you find. See what you, just see what you find and notice what you're going to miss if God doesn't open your eyes. And the Lord willing, Sunday, I'm going to talk about the irony in Jonah. The, 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 there's so much irony in Jonah. I'm just amazed at the irony in Jonah. Uh, oh, Lord, I don't want to preach it tonight. But uh, uh, one thing is that everything and everybody in the book of Jonah obey God except Jonah. <laughs> Did you know that? Everything, even the dice, obey God. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. And, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, oh, there's just so, there's just, just so much uh, uh, that, God, that God showed me and is continuing to show me in the book of Jonah that I, that I had noticed um, uh, before. And so as you read through the book of Jonah, you know, we're supposed to be looking for the sovereignty of God. And so look for the sovereignty of God. Uh, you, and the sovereignty of God is in every chapter. I mean, in chapter one, I mean, there's just a number of things that God is sovereign over, I, you know, sovereign over the, uh, over the, can you imagine the, the mariners, they want to find out who's responsible for this storm. And they, they, they shoot dice <laughs> and the dice fell on Jonah. I mean, that was not coincidental. That was God. And, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, but anyway, uh, we want to get to our lesson tonight. But this, but uh, my, here's, this is what I'm getting at: is that I wrote out an outline for tonight, and if I had given that outline to you, it would it would tend to control me. But because I didn't give it out, what I had planned for tonight, the Lord gave me something this afternoon that's that's different, and that's why we're going to have a part one and a part two, and. Uh, and, and so when I, it, it's important that you have your Bible, and I'm, I, I plan to go slow down to give you a chance to, to write notes, because there's no way you're going to remember even what I'm going to share with you tonight. There's no way you're going to remember it if you don't write it down. You are not going to remember it. Your, your memory, my memory isn't that great. If I don't write it down, I wouldn't remember it. And uh, one of the things that I've begun to do on the treadmill is is review things, scriptures and 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 various things to review them, to keep them fresh in my mind. Uh, because as you get older, your memory will decline. And in the, in the, in the way that you adjust to that, or the way I adjust to it, I do more reviewing now. Um, uh, and that is going over things over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Now, as we consider unconditional election in election you remember elect means to choose election means gosh it's a bit it's biblical terms these are not calvinistic terms or terms that were created by calvin these election is in the bible and and i gave you some scriptures in fact you can take a concordance and look up the word elect and look up the word election and you will find all of the scriptures where those words are found so these words are in the bible Predestination is a biblical word. It's in the Bible. All right. Uh, it's 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 a number of it. predestination. It's it's a biblical a, a term. It's it's in uh, uh, Romans chapter eight. It's in Ephesians chapter uh, one twice. It occurs twice in in Ephesians chapter one. So these are these are biblical terms. Uh, uh, that, what, the, the problem is misinterpretation. This is why you have disagreements and this is why you have different denominations is 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 a different in interpretation now i want to give you the two words that it is important that we understand and if we if we don't understand these words and i and i and again i recognize that as we look at these doctrines especially uh limited atonement there's no way that you're going to accept that believe that or accept that unless god opens your eyes and shows it to you now, I'm not going to be able to do it. And I, the reason that I know I'm not going to be able to do it because nobody was able to 
no one was able to convince me or persuade me of some of these things. God had to show me, and he showed me from the scripture, not by listening to uh, a, a famous preacher or Calvin or anything like that. I have a lot of Calvin's work. In fact, I've given away, I gave away a whole set of his commentaries. And I have his uh, most famous work is the Institutes. I have that. Uh, and so uh, I, I read very little of Calvin. I know very little about Calvin. All right. And so I go to the scriptures and that's where I get my, that's where I get my, my, my messages. That's where I get my convictions. That's where I get my belief. That's where I feed my faith. Now, and, and you understand election simply means that God shows, God shows. Now, Arminians say God's choice, his election uh, was conditional. And that is God saw what people would do. He saw that some people would believe, some people would uh, receive faith, some people would receive Jesus, and some would not. And those who he saw would receive Jesus, those are the ones he elected. Now that's the belief that a lot of people have. I want to show you that the scripture doesn't teach that. I want us to see what the scriptures teach, okay? And let's, I want to start with two words that it's important that we understand, and I've been saying them for years, but I, many of us may not know what they are. So these are two words I ask you to memorize. I ask you to study these words, and I want to tonight just give you a few scriptures. In fact, we're going to look at them. I'm going to take my time. We're going to go to these words, and we're going to look at where they are in the scriptures. And I want to give you a definition of these words, and I want to show you scriptures where the it's very clear as to what the definition is. One word is yada, y-a-d-a, -A, yada. Now there is a y-a-d-a-h, which is different. They 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 pronounce the same way, but they they're not the same. So. Y-A-D-A, -A. that's the Hebrew. The Greek is gnosko, G-I-N-O-S-K-O. -O. That's the Greek. Both of these words, they mean exactly the same. It's just that one is Hebrew and the other is Greek. And these words mean, number one, two main meanings. And it, it can mean to be aware of something, but two main meanings of these words. Meaning number one, an intimate love relationship. And I can't hear you and I, and I don't need to, but say it with me. Intimate love relationship. Write it down somewhere. Intimate love relationship, number one. Number two is to know by experience. We all know the president of the United States, Joe Biden. But do we know him intimately? Do we know him by experience? Have we ever met him face to face? Have we ever walked with him? Have we ever talked to him? Have we ever had dinner with him? Have we ever had any kind of experience with him at all in a personal way? That would be yada, Hebrew. To know intimately, to know by experience. And the Greek word is, it's a verb. Both of them are verbs. Ginosko, G-I-N-O-S-K-O. -O. Now, let's look at some places in the Bible where these two words occur. So we can see if this, if if the, if these de definitions that I gave you are correct, turn with it to Genesis chapter four and verse one, and write it in your notes, and 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 look at it later. There are a lot of places where these words occur, but I want to just give you a few places, and we don't need to look at a lot of them, but just a few places where these words occur. Now, Genesis chapter four and verse one, and Adam knew, and by the way. The, the, the English words that are used to translate yada in gnosko are no new known. Those are, those are three of the verbs that are used. No, new, 
and known. No new, and, and, and that's not an N-O now, that's K-N-O-W. No new known. Now, listen, listen to Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Now, Adam knew Eve and she conceived. Is this verse saying that Adam was aware of Eve and she conceived? Or is this verse saying Adam, and Adam had an intimate love relationship intercourse with Eve and she conceived? Personal, intimate. It does not, this verse is not saying Adam was aware of Eve. And as a result of his awareness of Eve, she conceived. This verse is not saying that. Let's look at another one. Turn to Genesis chapter 22. And this is a verse that for many years troubled me. I just couldn't figure it. I just didn't understand it until I un until I looked at the Hebrew. And that is, you remember how God told Abraham, uh, take your son Isaac to uh, a place that I'm going to show you, and uh, you are to uh, you to you you to sacrifice him. And when Abraham put Isaac on the altar and was about to sacrifice him, and by the way, if you read this 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 uh, this this chapter carefully, you'll see that the angel of the Lord was Jesus Christ. It was the second person in the Trinity. It's called, in many times, when Jesus appeared or appeared in human form, uh, those appearances are called Christophanies. Any appearance of God is called in a theophany. But then when Jesus uh, or God appears in, 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 in a human form, in Jesus, usually called the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament, it's called a Christophany which is a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. Now, God stops Abraham, Genesis 22, 12. Listen. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know, for now I know I know that thou fears God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. Now I know. Here's what troubles me. God knows everything. There's nothing that God doesn't know in terms of being aware of. God is aware of all of the past. He's aware of all of the present. He's aware of all of the future. There is nothing that he does not know. There isn't nothing or anything knowable that he does not know. Why does he now say here, now I know? <laughs> it's by experience. I know now by experience. God knew what Abraham was going to do because he's omniscient. Some. 139 verses 1 through 4. There's nothing we can do that God doesn't know about. I mean, God even knows our thoughts before we know our thoughts. But the word here, now I know, is yada. It, it, and there is a Hebrew word that means to be aware of something. And there's a Greek word also that means to be aware of something. But yada in Gnosko means to not only, not, not just to be aware of something, but to know something intimately, to, to know something by relationship. And so when I understood that know here translates yada, okay, now I understand what God is saying. I know now by experience that you trust me, that you fear me. God knew all of these things in terms of his omniscience. Yeah, let's look at let's look at another one. 
Jeremiah chapter one and verse and verse five. Jeremiah chapter one and verse five. I can quote it. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. <laughs> and I ordained you a prophet to the nation. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you, which means that I knew you in an intimate love relationship. God is not saying I was, I was aware of you before I formed you in the belly. No, no, no. That was an intimate love relationship. Before I form you in the belly. One more. One more. Uh, turn to Amos. Turn to Amos. This is uh, one of the minor prophets. And so Amos. Amos comes after uh, Joel. You have uh, Daniel, Hosea, Joel. And then Amos. Amos. Chapter 3 and verse 2. Amos chapter 3 and verse 2. And God is speaking to his people, and this is what he says to them. You only have I known. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Of all the families of the earth, you only. Only have I known. I have not known the other families of the earth. God is not saying I'm aware of you, but I'm not aware of the Hittites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the Canaanites, the the well, the, the Termites. <laughs> but I, you only have I known. Is God saying I'm only aware of the Israelites? No, I'm, am I, am I, I, listen, the reason that we, we know that that's not what God is saying is that of all the families of the earth, you only, uh, uh, am I aware of, uh, you only have I uh, known in the sense of being aware, you're the only ones uh, uh, of whom uh, I am aware. But in, uh, in Genesis, you don't need to turn there. You can just, I'm going to turn there and you can listen. You can keep your place there in Amos because I want to camp here for a while. This is very, this is very important. In uh, Genesis chapter 15, uh, Genesis chapter 15, uh, uh, God is speaking to Abraham in verse 18. He says, in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham saying, unto thy seed have I given thee I haven't given this land. Abraham, under your seed, I've given this land. Under your seed, I have given the land of Israel. Under your seed. I've given the land of Israel under your seed. Under thy seed have I given this land, Israel. From the, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. The Kenites, the Kenites, the Kamezites, the Cadomites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Ramphims, the Ammonites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, the Jebusites. I've given you this land. And God's promise to Abraham is unconditional. There are no conditions attached to it. In Genesis chapter 12, God said to Abraham, get out of, go, leave your father's house, go to a land that I'm going to show you. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Nations that, 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 that curse Israel, even though they're unbelievers, many of them, many of them are atheists. The promise God made to Abraham is unconditional. Bless Israel and I will bless you. Curse Israel and I will curse you. Although many of them in Israel have not accepted Jesus as their Messiah. They're still waiting for the Messiah. Many in Israel are atheists. 
But God made an unconditional, get conditional promise to Abraham. Lord willing, I have more to say about all that later. But I want to just see here is that when God says, of all the families of the earth, you only have I known. He's not saying you're the only ones that I'm aware of. Because he just he, we just, he just told, told Abraham in Genesis 15, 15 about the other nations. But the word no here is Yada. Of all the families of the earth, of all the nations of the earth, you only do I have an intimate love relationship with. You're the only ones that I know intimately. You're the only ones I have a relationship with. And, and notice what else he says here. You only have I known of all the families of the earth, therefore. Therefore. Therefore, I will punish you for all of your iniquities. In other words, because I know you, because you have more privileges, because you have more knowledge, I'm going to punish you more severely than all of the nations of the world. The scriptures, look at it later. We, we don't have time to look at them now. Degrees of punishment. Degrees of punishment will be based upon the degrees of knowledge that you have. Read it in, in, in Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, verses 20 through 24. You'll see degrees of punishment. Luke chapter 12, verses 47 and 48. God said there, there are two servants. One knew his will and didn't do it. The other one didn't know his will and couldn't do it. And God said, the one who knew his will will be punished more severely. They're both going to be punished. But the one who didn't know will not be punished as severely as the one who knows. And when God, when, when the judgment day comes, of all the nations, Russia, China, you name it, America will be punished more severely than all the nations because of the opportunities, because of the wealth of information that's available. Radio stations, YouTube, internet, all kinds of translation. The freedom that we have in this country, this nation will be punished more severely than, 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 than all the others. All right, you know, that, 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 that's enough here. Are, and, and again, God is aware of everybody. How do I know that? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Neither is there any creature that's not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Please understand Yada. Now let's go to Gnosko. Let's start with John chapter 17 and verse 3. John chapter 17 and verse 3. <clears throat> And thou, now verse three, I'll just go to verse, well, no, I'll read it. Verse, as thou has given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. And this is life eternal. This is life eternal that they may know Genosko and in the Hebrew Bible Yada. I mean I, I have a Hebrew New Testament by the way. I have a Greek I have a Hebrew, I have a New Testament that was written in Hebrew. And I mean God arranges things. We were in Israel and uh, there was a store and they had a sale on Hebrew New Testament. The New Testament written in Hebrew and those books, I think, were about, about $5 at most. They weren't more than $5. It may have been even less than that. And I got as many as I could get. <laughs> five, five dollars for the whole New Testament written in Hebrew. 
And uh, and anyway, anyway, this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast said. This is eternal life, to know God. Not about God, but to know God intimately, to have an intimate love relationship with God the Father through God the Son. Now go back to chapter 10 of John. We've, we've, we've been here before. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And uh, this is where Jesus is the good shepherd. John chapter 10. John chapter 10 and, and, and verse 14. John chapter 10 and verse 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. I'm the good shepherd and know my sheep. And I'm known of mine. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. He's not saying here, I, I know my sheep. I'm aware of my sheep and my sheep are aware of me. Let me give you a verse here that I want you to meditate on. Just, just meditate on it. Especially in relation to limited atonement. Meditate on this verse. And it is John chapter 10 and verse 26. And Jesus is talking to the religious leaders. And this is what he says to them. These are the, the Pharisees, the religious leaders. And this is what he says to them. John chapter 10 verse 26. Please meditate on this verse. But you believe not because you are not my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Please read what this verse is saying and what it's not saying. You believe not because you are not my sheep. If you were a sheep, you would believe. But because you're not a sheep, you don't believe. The verse is not saying, if you believe, you would become a sheep. I don't want to get, get, get ahead of myself here, but when we get to chapter 25, we're going to see that there are sheep and there are goats. <laughs> there are sheep and there hey, you don't become a sheep, you don't become a goat, you are born a goat, or you're born a sheep, but you are a lost sheep. And you have to be found. But please, just meditate on this. Y'all just meditate on this. You believe not because you are, and these are religious people. You don't believe because you're not a sheep. If you were a sheep, you would believe. But because you're not a sheep, you don't believe. But you know how people read that? Is that you don't believe, and therefore you're not a sheep. That's how people read the verse. But that's not what the verse says. Oh, just meditate on that. We're going to get to I'm going to give you a lot of verses like that later on. But just meditate on that one. Let's look at a few more here. We, with, with, our, with our time here, a few more. Um, turn to Matthew. In fact, let's just look at one more. Let's just look at one more. We'll, we'll stop. Matthew, Matthew. Are you taking notes? Are you taking notes? Are you taking notes? I know you're listening, but are you taking notes? Yes. You need to meditate on these things. You need to meditate on these things. And ask God to open your eyes as you meditate on it. Because there are things, oh, there are things you will not see unless God opens your eyes. And I mean, I just, the things that God is showing me in Jonah. I mean, it's just, I, I can't contain myself. <laughs> the things that he is showing me in Jonah. And uh, oof, the things he's showing me in, in Jonah. Did, did you know that in, did you know that God told a weed to grow up and give Jonah shade? And the next day he told a worm to eat up the weed. <laughs> hey, a God that can talk to worms. A God that can make dice <laughs> fall on a man that can throw the, I can trust him. I can trust him. A God that can start storms and stop them. <laughs> Can start him when he wants to and stop him when he wants to. Oh, I, ooh, I can't wait to get to that. <laughs> it's the word of God is rich. Look at Matthew chapter 7. Let's begin at verse 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, 
shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Gnosko, I never had an intimate love relationship with you. We never had a relationship. I didn't know you. You didn't know me intimately. Because remember, John 17, 3, this is life eternal, that they may know thee. Gnosko, know intimately, that they may know thee, and the only true God whom thou hast sent. And so Jesus is saying, I was never aware of you. The context tells you that he was aware of them because he told them what they did. He said, many, many of them are going to do this and that. And so when he says, I never knew you, he's not saying I was never aware of you. He was saying there was never an intimate love relationship. You know? And by the way, if you're wondering, are you chosen? If you're wondering, are you elect? I can I can tell you right now. If you at some point in your life came to Jesus, if you at some point in your life trusted Jesus, and if you are trusting Jesus, you have been chosen. You are elected. The reason that I know John 6, 44, no man can come to me unless the father draws it. No one can believe unless God gives them the faith with which to believe. And so if you're a believer tonight and you have trusted Jesus, you have been chosen. You are elected. You don't have to wonder about that anymore. Because Jesus said no man can. There's a difference between can and may. Can has to do with ability. May has to do with permission. And Jesus said, no one can unless the Father who sent me draw him. And that word, the draw, means to, to really drag. And that does not mean, and I don't like this teaching that, uh, uh, you, know, I, I hear somebody, you know, here's a group of people that want to be saved, but they can't be saved because they're not elected. Here's another group of people that don't want to be saved, but because they're elected, God drags them in. The Bible doesn't teach that. This is another sermon on Jonah. God can make you willing <laughs> to do what he wants you to do. <laughs> he can make you willing to do. I mean, listen, when God wants you to do something, God can make you willing. I'll give you, I could give you some examples, but I, I can't do it tonight. But anyway, listen, I mean, Jonah... It's the only, of all, it, again, everyone, everything in the book of Jonah, obey God except Jonah. But then after chapter two, Jonah obeyed God in chapter three. <laughs> and you know, some folk have to have a chapter two in their life. And after the belly, after he spent some time in the belly of the, of the fish, and God said, now go right. And, and ah, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop it. God showed me so much on Jonah. I'll start preaching on Jonah tonight. It's, it's like fire shut up in my bones. <laughs> Lord, thank you for our time together tonight. Thank you for the richness of your word. And I do pray, Lord, that you would give us understanding as we, as we study your word, Lord. Without you giving us understanding, there are things we will not see. There are things that we're just not going to understand. And so open our eyes, grant that we may behold wondrous things from your word. And then grant us understanding. And I thank you, Lord, for the things that you are showing me in the book of Jonah that I've not noticed in over 50 years of studying the book of Jonah or reading the book of Jonah. Uh, but anyway, thank you that, you that you're showing me things. And I thank you for the richness of your word. I thank you for even leading me to do a systematic exposition of Jonah. It, it, it has been a blessing to me already. And uh, we've only done one message, 
and I have been just blessed. And so thank you. I thank you for all of the uh, participants tonight. I thank you for all who are who are a part of this uh, meeting on tonight. And I do ask your, your blessings upon them, Lord. I pray a special blessing upon everyone on this meeting uh, on tonight. And I ask, Lord, that you would just put in our hearts a desire to, to love you more, to obey you more, to trust you more, to glorify you more, to pray to you more, Lord, and to share our faith with others more, Lord. And, uh, and so I just thank you. And I thank you for all of those that work to make these meetings uh, possible. Uh, Sister Christine, uh, Brother James, uh, Minister Douglas, Minister Deborah, uh, 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 Elder Rick Norris, and uh, Brother Al Hayward. And so we give you thanks. Thank you now. And I pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Every eye blessing, ye varkika adonai, ye shmirika. Ya e adonai panav, e leka bikineka.